Diamond Matt channel, welcome. My first upload of 2023. Happy New Year, hope you're all doing well. Hope you all had a good Christmas New Year. And uh, let's, uh, let's look forward to 2023. Get richer, get more healthy, get wiser, get stronger, get more skilled at the bench, most importantly. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off immediately by saying thank you to new patrons. The last video I did was a full instructional guide and they take me ages to finish. Plus over Christmas, I wasn't able to get on with it as much as uh, normal. So I've uh, got a few few names built up to say thank you to. Thank you very much guys for your patience waiting for this. Uh, we've got Lara, Richard BKR Stevens, Sharon Wellen, Corey Lawson, Soren Yesenberger, Julie Mayer, and then a few, a few in the first few days of January, we got uh, Stephen Friedel, Principal, Daniel Park, and Andre T. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate you becoming patrons. I appreciate all the patrons. Uh, people who give me a little bit of financial help to continue this channel really genuinely makes a big difference. I know I always say that, but I'm, I'm so grateful because it really does enable me to keep making videos. So I enjoy making them. So with a little bit of financial help, like it literally enables me to keep doing it. So yeah, I'm happy to share my skills and expertise with you. And uh, yeah, very grateful for your contributions to enabling me to continue doing it. So talking of patrons, this video is specifically for a patron. Hello, Liz. Thank you for your question. She wanted to know uh, a bit more detail about how I use my tweezers. Like, so I'm gonna talk about tweezers, how I hold them, these little toggles I use on them, slots in my bench peg. Uh, maybe not all jewelers do this, but I wanna share what works for me. So you, you can use it if you want, or you can take it and modify it, uh, whatever, make it more suitable for you personally in your space and your, your tools you have. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. So to answer Liz's question about how I use my tweezers, this video is gonna be all about that. So first of all, the type of tweezers I use, these are always double A, I assume that's the size, stainless, non-magnetic. These are watchmaker's tweezers, I think. Uh, I like them because they, they, they're really precise, they're really sharp. This comes from me, my last job, I used to do quite a bit of work with fine chains. You need some that really delicately go to a point and close up really nicely to be able to hold small links in exact positions and securely that you want. So I've just got in the habit of using these, I really like them. They're good for picking up tiny bits of solder as well. If you've got these slightly bigger ones, to pick up a tiny bit of solder with these, much more clumsy and difficult. They're not sharp. I mean, you can sharpen them and modify them. Like you can see mine are slightly bent and stuff. Uh, but they don't close up nicely. They're a bit more kind of roughly made. These watchmakers ones are much more of a precision instrument. So I like watchmakers ones, but definitely worth having some bigger ones that are more specific for jewelers because they're good for holding things that are a bit heavy, a bit big, rings and stuff. Like this is my ring from the from instructional guide I just made. Might want to hold a ring like that when I'm doing a solder on it. Uh, yeah, you need something a bit bigger. And then the little toggles I use to close them up. That, nothing special about that. It's certainly not something you buy. That is literally just a crappy bit of silver scrap just wrapped up. Put it on. You, you might have to experiment a little bit, but they're not tight. They slide on there. The idea is you grip something. And then you just slide that down until it. you can sort of take your fingers off it. You can hold things further away in case it's getting hot when you're soldering. Uh, it's just convenient really to have it holding itself like that. So these are good and they've got quite a bit of feel as well. So you can sense how hard you're crushing something. Something delicate like a silver jump ring. Uh, it might be fine like that, but if I put heat on that, it's probably gonna squash it flat. So you need to be a bit careful about how hard you crush things. Something that does the same job is that slot in the bench peg. You see that? I can push that in, and as I pull it, pull it down, they close up. So, same, doing the same thing. I can hold something in tweezers, just slide it down a little bit, let go. It's holding it in there in position, so that's good for soldering in front of me. Really convenient. I really like doing that. It's a good trick. And I've got one that angle, one that angle, and I'm about to change my bench peg. Uh, I'm gonna put them on the other side as well. That can be useful, having them having one that way or one that way. I've needed that a few times. It can be a bit awkward sometimes, the way you're kind of forced to hold something. Uh, it's not always a good angle, that or that, so it'll be useful to have one on the other side as well. So definitely I'm gonna cut that. I'll do a video when I change my bench peg and show you exactly what I do. But yeah, that's what that slot's for. It does the same job as that toggle thing. But I will say there's less feel. I, don't, I can't really sense how hard I'm crushing it when I push it down into that. So one thing I have done in the past, put the, toggle on where I'm comfortable. It's holding it t securely, but not so tight it's gonna squash out of shape when I solder it. And then I've used these spring tweezers. I've literally just done that. It's just holding it in the same position really. And uh, yeah, doing the same job and it's not overly crushing it. 
So if you're gonna make one of these toggle things, like I said earlier, this is just a scrap bit of silver just bent up, works really well. Uh, this is something I made when I first ever made one. I think it's the very first one I made. I'm still using it now, it's just a literally bit of copper wire. Uh, it's a bit scratchy when it goes on there, but it does go down. I have tried to make them in the past. I made one with a bit of uh, paper clip, just wrapped it round. It was uh, too, too difficult. It was gripping too much. It was working, but it's gripping too much. So it was difficult when the tweezers were hot. I just wanted to get something to let go quickly and then put it down gently. It was too much of an effort to pull it off. So stop using that one. But you may find you make them, they go missing. <laughs> you have to make another one, but <laughs> whatever. They, they're not special things. Just quickly wrap a bit of metal around and try and get it right. So it slides down nicely. Actually using them, having them in action. You can see these are a bit more burnt. I tend to grab these for actually holding things for soldering. So I've got a bit of wire. I'll say you're making a pearl pendant. You just want a little jump ring with a peg on it so that peg can go and get set into the pearl. And then you just have a little ring sticking out the top and then that can be hung as a, a pendant. So there's my bit of wire. That'll be the peg. That's holding there nicely, nice and secure. I don't got to worry too much about over squashing that. I would hold this with a join at the bottom, jump ring. <laughs> Slide that on without being sensitive, without over crushing it. What I tend to do is rest, try to rest my hand somewhere because I'm going to solder that on while it's under heat. So I don't want to have like my elbows and my arms on the air. It's going to be difficult to hold it in position. It'd be possible, but it's much more wobbly. I like to try and secure my wrist on something and then it's just my hands holding it in position. I always have a trial run, make sure I can comfortably hold it in position. And then I like my blowtorch, get it fluxed get a bit of solder on there. I might even already have solder melted on that ring doing this kind of job. Then it's just a case of just holding it in position, putting the heat on it, waiting for it to solder. I'll wait a second, make sure it's definitely set. Then I will just have to imagine that's on there. I will let go and then turn the flame off, have a close look without touching it. I'll get my loop, have a close look, make sure I like the join. If I don't like the join, I might have to pull it off again or I might have to try and touch a little bit, a bit more solder on either reflood it or touch a little bit more solder on and then hold it in position again and do the same thing. But anyway, it's all possible because it's so conveniently in front of me like this. It's really, really good. It's under the lamp. I've got my wrist there supported. It's just really clear. And uh, yeah, I do recommend trying to get your soldering done neatly in front of you. It's just really convenient and enables you to do a good, neat job. To show you uh, an example of these big tweezers being in action. They're good for holding rings on the side like that. So I'd have that in, squashed in there. Like say I was doing a, a re-tipping job. Literally same again. I have my wire there, get under the heat, put a new claw on. Unless I'm taking a stone off and putting a whole new claw on the side, which is a better repair, but sometimes customers' budgets and stuff, they want it repaired and you sort of can do it. Sometimes you can just get away with putting a tip on top of the claw. Don't always recommend it. They don't seem to last as long. Uh, it's better if you just replace the whole claw, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Uh, yeah, I would do it the same way, hold it that way. Or platinum, 1700. It's always good to have a bit of pressure on it to make sure it's staying closed. Got your join there, doing a the ring size in. I'd have, it, have that ring upside down in these tweezers, squeezing it closed so as it gets hot, metal expands as it gets hot. There's no risk of it opening up a little bit. Um, it also eliminates the risk of it opening and then also just holds it really conveniently in front of me. So same thing, just squeeze it in there as hard as I want and get the fire on it, do that ring sizing job. So there you go, that was like a, a video like spotlight on what my hands are doing while using my tweezers, exactly the techniques I'm using and, and why. Uh, it's just comfort and convenience really. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend having these slots in your bench peg uh, if you haven't got them. It's just a hacksaw job. So you've got to be careful, don't go too wide that your tweezers just go through without closing right up. But you don't want them too tight either because then your tweezers will, will not go in enough and they might not be secure. You're working with red hot bits of metal. So uh, you've got to be a little bit careful, make sure things are secure. So yeah, there you go, end it there. Wouldn't mind clicking like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, I hope you join me on the next upload. All right, see you later, bye.